Dear Newspaper Editor, For the past year, our poorest people have been under siege. The police have ruthlessly hunted the elderly, the ill, the hungry, and the unemployed. They detain our most unfortunate citizens and drag them to court to face charges. At trial, they're inevitably found guilty of disturbing the peace. They end up being sent to prison as convicted criminals. When finally released, they face an impossible choice. Either die of hunger on the streets, or return to begging and be imprisoned once again. So I ask you and your readers, is it a crime to be poor? If a person is suffering from poverty, does that mean they are committing a felony? If so, then why would Jesus, who came to this world to teach us to love each other as brothers, why would he choose to embrace poverty and stand for the poor? And why did he claim that how we treat the poor is as if we are doing those same things to him? This situation is nothing new. When I was young, Italy was going through the Risorgimento, the consolidation of all the various foreign-ruled city-states on the peninsula into a single unified country. Wealthy aristocrats held most of the land. And the vast majority suffered lives of poverty and misery. The eternal struggle of those who have nothing against those who have everything. This war against the government, the church, and the aristocracy caused mass unemployment and left many children orphaned. To make matters worse, the rich claimed the poor were unsanitary and created a public nuisance. Rather than trying to solve the underlying causes of this terrible social crisis, they pressured the authorities to arrest those destitute souls living in the squares, the gardens, and on the streets. Look at them. It's simply disgraceful. Do something. Yes, sir. Miss, just back. a moment, please. Come on. What are you doing? Huh? No, 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 no. You're under arrest, no, ma'am. No, please, please come with us. No, 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 it's all right. Children, no, back up. No, no, Stay back. No, 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 no. Why are you doing this? Come along, children. Taken by the suffering I had witnessed, I realized we needed empathetic, principled people of action to help change the plight of those less fortunate. Life was tough for my family, too. My dad passed away before I was two years old, leaving my mom, Anna Toscano, on her own to raise me and my three siblings, my brother John, my sister Catherine, and Francis, the youngest, who had inherited my father's name. Thanks to my uncle, Father Rafael Di Francia, 
went off to school at the age of seven. God keep you. That was the start of many long years of study and loneliness. I very much missed my mother and my siblings. But I realize now that going through those tough times was essential to my education. One day at school, during our lunch, an old man who I had seen begging out on the street entered the cafeteria. Hey, look! That beggar is stealing our bread and cheese! So you're hungry? Wanna eat this? <laughs> Please forgive us for being so awful. Please allow us to make it up to you. We'd like you to have this. It was around then that I started to write poetry. It was my way to try to put into words the strong emotions I felt for all the people living in poverty. Remember poor people who lost their way. Showing love is best. So open your heart today. I did not know then that the transformation of this reality could come through me. I had always enjoyed reading the story of Jesus and the saints. People who had changed the reality of their time, surrounded by so much oppression and misery, their example inspired me. I silently looked at the withering of the grass on my balcony, and my years of living vanishing away. As a young man, quite a few people enjoyed my way with words. This song is my joy. The little grass, the beautiful brown trees on the mountains, the moon and sun I see from my balcony. Not so much my friends, however. They weren't exactly the poetry types. They are the memory of my first love. <laughs> Checkmate. Wait, what? Oh, come 
Come on. <laughs> yeah, and it ball. <laughs> and you told me you were good. It was you who wanted to go. You <laughs> lost again. I'm leaving. <laughs> we'll have a rematch. Well, don't be upset. My turn to play. So uh, then, are you ready to get beat? No. <laughs> <laughs> The song is your sword, and the flag over you is the harp. Writing has Fight always been my passion, even more so up. when I learned about the printing press. Rise up from the mud. Your mind is your life. My and uncle, God, Father God Joseph Toscano, encouraged me to pursue a writing career. This is wonderful. Walk down the road, O oh poet, and wait. The song is your sword, and the flag over you is the harp. Fight and win. Listen. Rise from the mud. Your mind is your life. And God is your virtue. Hmm. Very proud of you. Good work. You are very talented, Hannibal. You keep nurturing this talent, and you'll stand out amongst our greatest writers one day. Thanks, Uncle. Well done. <laughs> Things seemed to be going in the right direction for me. I had many friends. I felt certain that I would have a prosperous and fulfilling career doing what I loved, writing. But despite all that, I remain troubled still by the misery suffered by those less fortunate. I felt the world needed more heroes to come forward, and so I prayed. I believed that through prayer, God would send more people willing to help. And it was that day that I received from Jesus the path of my calling. Sudden irresistible and safe. An impulse from the heart, but with the certainty of faith. It was now clear to me how to change the miserable reality that far too many people experience. I never imagined that the next big hurdle would be my mother. Mother? Francis and I spoke with the father and we want to enter the seminary together. Yes, both of us. Exactly. But now who will feed this family? Have you forgotten about us? You're doing so well at the newspaper. It's a great career for you. Now, Francis is a perfect fit for the priesthood. But not you, Hannibal. Certainly not. But, Mother, if we just could... thought... You're a poet. You're more than that. You're a journalist. The soul of an artist. That is your future. That should be your dream. I hope this is just temporary. Father, we don't have our family support. 
Our mother doesn't like the idea. She doesn't want us to be priests. Well, all right then. What you will have to do is go visit the bishop. We know how he feels. I'm fairly certain he'll give you his blessing and we'll go from there. Well, after all, you are Father Joseph Toscano's nephews. Hannibal. The bishop greatly admires your poems. Don't worry. He'll give his permission. So it came to be. With the blessing from the bishop, we would present Mother with her fait accompli. My brother and I joined the seminary. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. Forgive us. Give us your blessing. Mother was left with just one choice, to give her consent. If the Lord is calling you, I won't be the one to oppose his will. of the Catholic word. Just before being ordained a priest, I was walking the streets of Messina when I came upon a blind young man begging for money. He was like so many others in my city. But as I witnessed this man suffering, I knew that a single penny wouldn't be enough. Please help me for the sake of God. I thought if I learned more about him, I could discover what it was that he really needed. One penny is all I need. Oh, thank you. Thank you. What is your name? My name is Francis Sancone. And where do you live? Oh, well, I live in Avignon. Has anyone ever taught you about God? <laughs> and who would teach me that? Listen, Francis. Is it possible to visit you sometime? 
to give you some help. No one has ever helped me. Uh, no, it's not a good idea. You wouldn't like it there. That encounter was a sign that opened my eyes to my true path. When we got to Avignon, my first thought was that I could truly make a difference in the lives of these people. Here was the ideal place to start my mission and follow Jesus' love for the poor. Yes, I'd be delighted. Dominus Nostrum, in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. Look at you. You have made the right decision, my son. <laughs> Bravo, Hannibal. Not anymore. From now on, he's known as Father Hannibal. <laughs> yes, of course. That is until he becomes a bishop. <laughs> <laughs> well, it really has so I had already decided anyone that to I've live known, my life you, as Jesus lived. Yes, yes, it's true. He excelled so much in the verbal skills, especially with his poetry, as you well know. Absolutely. I'd forgotten about that. That was right. We did do that. Yeah. You're very right to point that out. Bishop, I think you realize what my hope is. I really want to serve the outcasts, the homeless, and the poor. I'm uncertain of how to spread the word of the Lord without being around them. Father Hannibal, you may go with my blessing. 
However, you need to know this will be very difficult. I was there to work for all those people and build the Lord's kingdom. I even rented a house in Avignon so I could be close by to serve my neighbors. Excuse me, would your family be interested in some soup? Thank you. Very nice. Today I'm going to teach you something new. It's called the Lord's Prayer. Now with your right hand, we'll make the sign of the cross. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Close your eyes and then repeat after me. Our Father who art in heaven. Our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Here, this is for you to use to... Gradually, I began to earn their trust and to transform lives. Father. Ah, Joseph. Uh, Father, I thought you could use this to help with the poor. Thank you so much, Joseph. My pleasure. Have a good night. God bless you. Uh, thank you, Father. Father Hannibal? As word spread, more people came for help. I'm sorry, but we really need a place to stay. Of course, come with me, please. I have to say, this wine is good. Mm. Oh, Father. I need as much bread as you can spare. But why? The children have nothing to eat. Oh, but of course. Whatever I have, I'm happy to give to them. This man has no clue. What does he think he's doing? And just look at how he dresses. What could he be gaining from this? Bread, Father. Thank you. Thank you very much, Joseph. God You're bless welcome. you. Many townspeople helped me. But there were others who just couldn't open their minds to the selflessness of doing a good deed. Hello, are you hungry? Yeah. I have some bread. Jesus said, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a single seed. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. The pathway to love goes through Calvary. Easing their hunger was just the start. But to really transform these people's lives meant feeding their minds as well. Among other things, I started a small printing shop in Avignon, where the villagers were able to learn how to read and write. 
and they were taught to do a variety of jobs so that they could make a living. In a world like ours, not having an education or work skills leaves people with no chance of improving upon their current existence. The uneducated and unemployed are shunned from mainstream society, forced to live on the fringes, barely surviving in the ghettos, oppressed, exploited, marginalized, and rejected. A prayer bag for urgent requests, or if you have debts. brought the meat. Someone who would really like for you to have at least one decent meal in your lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> Father Hannibal? Father? Would you have any food or money? It's for my children. Come in. Excuse me. But Hannibal, that gift was yours. He needs it more than I do. Thank you. Thank you so much. St. Joseph's bag was always stuffed full with my requests. So, I decided to place a statue of St. Anthony next to him. I wasn't worried about a rivalry between the two saints, because unlike here on Earth, there is no fighting or jealousy in Heaven. You are two very powerful saints. So hopefully you both will be able to help me overcome all of the trouble I get into for the love of the poor. You know I can't handle this without you.
When he saw the crowds, Jesus had compassion for them because they were confused and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is great, but the workers are few. So pray to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Of course, a commandment. Jesus wants us to pray for laborers for his harvest. I then started praying to God that he would send more people willing to help change this reality of misery and oppression. I prayed that he would send more helpers to assist me with the tremendous workload. I understood the power of prayer to bring what was needed. My good brothers, dear sisters and children, Today I will read to you from the Bible. I would like you to follow along. Right. When he saw the crowds, when he saw the crowds, Jesus had compassion for them. Jesus had compassion for them. And so, as a harvest laborer, my calling became clearer. To Jesus' request, the Rogata commandment, I dedicated my life. It's the engine that drives my very existence, the inspiration behind all that I do. Many are the needy, but few are those who are willing to help bring about change. So pray to the Lord of the Harvest. So pray to the Lord of the Harvest to send laborers into His harvest. To send laborers into His harvest. That was chapter nine, verse thirty-eight, a passage from the Gospel of Matthew. You can jail all the poor people on earth, but you can never destroy the charitable heart that drives us to help those less fortunate. There shall always be the kind soul that gives to the poor and feeds the hungry, that shall take in as brothers the fallen and abandoned, who won't look away when seeing the homeless on the street almost starving to death, and who shall feel the warm glow and sweet comfort of performing a good deed. We can't eliminate poverty, because the human condition and society's structure ensure that there will always be those that have and those that have not. You can arrest them, convict them, but no matter what you do to suppress them, the word of the gospel remains. You will always have the poor among you. Dear editor, I hope to move the readers of this letter to take action and find a place in their hearts to care for the weak, the oppressed, the unfortunates. For when you discover and embrace your charitable spirit, you shall have the blessings of God and of humanity. Please accept, dear editor, my greatest respect and admiration. Sincerely, Hannibal, Mary, De Francia. <laughs>